Hi everyone, welcome to the studio. We're going to talk about the painting a beginning rose, okay? And I've had a lot of questions about it, and we haven't had a rose video on the channel here for over a month, so it's time to put one back up on here again, okay? But I promised some of you that I would show you, break down and show you a step-by-step -step process of painting beginning rose. And in doing so, I'm also going to slow down and I'm gonna go through the surfaces, the paint, and everything I use, because i got a lot of beginners out there that are starting to follow us here, and I want to make sure that you can follow along with us and not get lost, okay? All right, and I'm going to show you both in a pure acrylic version, and then I'm going to show you an all prime or what we call a wet and wet version, that those of you that paint in oils, you'll be able to paint the roses that we do in your oils if you follow the wet and wet version there. And they're very different. The techniques I use are very different, okay? So the, if you're painting in oils, and that's a lot of questions I get, I paint in oils, can I do these techniques? Well, if I'm if any of my videos that say all the prema on it, you an oil artist can do those techniques. If they say acrylic on it, no, you can't do those techniques because I'm using the drying of the paint. I mean, you could do it in oils, but you have to wait several days for that oil to tack up, okay? So if you see it as a pure acrylic, no. If you see it as an oil prima, yes. And I do, you know, about half and half here on the channel, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of the stuff. First thing about our brushes, this is the fusion brush. Fusion means the type of hair it is. It's a synthetic squirrel hair. It was originally designed for watercolor, but it's such a, it's a soft, beautiful brush, and I use it because of its, it is so very soft, and it also holds a tremendous amount because it was made for watercolor. I use two different sizes, two different types when I paint roses. This is the flat, and this is the filbert. The filbert makes uh, roses that are a little bit more of a stroke. So these are stroke roses that I painted with the filbert. And so they carry the older decorative painting look to it. And you can see, like here, I use a petal stroke that is made of three different strokes together to make a form of petal. I do a, sh a, a medium length one, long length one, and then one that is right in between the two. That's how I build the petal. And I talk about that in other videos. Blossoms here, you can clearly see two strokes to making each blossom petal here. So these are stroke roses. These other types of roses, ones like you see right over here that are very soft, I use the flat for those. The flat gives you a, it you know, doesn't give you that predetermined rounded shape here. And so I can use it on its edge, its, its chisel, its flat, and, and all different kinds of angles to get different types of looks. That's what I do, okay? All right, so that's the brush. That's the brush that I use. The boards that I use, I use a couple different sizes and a couple different types. This is an MDF, and you can see that from the back. This is a, uh, this is a nice old one that I've used several times. This is tempered masonite. And they're both very inexpensive surfaces to use. I get them in one eighth inch thick. And I just go to my local Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's. I have all of them right here in Nebraska. And all of them carry it, big four by eight sheets. That's why I get it. I also, if you go over to the Jansen Art Studio, click free videos, go over down at the bottom there to the supplies page, click that, scroll down, and then you'll see all of the supplies that I use, and you can see there's a link there for Amazon for the hardboard for different sizes, and you can get it there. I do not use cardboards or paper or any of that kind of stuff. As a teacher for you know 40 years, uh, I always tell my students that you should practice on the surface that you're going to paint for real on the big commission pieces. So I paint and practice and do everything exactly the same in practice that I do in uh, a commission painting so that my surface is, uh, there's nothing changes when I go to the big expensive painting. It's all the same. It's the same thing that I've been practicing with, okay? That's just like a musician practicing on one thing and then going and playing a different instrument or something like that. If it feels different, and it will, cardboards and other surfaces are totally different. If it feels different, it's going to be different, and that's going to affect you, okay? So I always say practice on the same surfaces that you're going to decorate and, and paint. I go, I use straight paint. So when I make a board like this, this is the uh, tempered masonite board, I mix up a color. My normal mix is a black and a white and a little bit of yellow, and I always use this value scale. 
go over to the supply page on Jansen Art Studio and you can download this for free. And I like my backgrounds when I'm practicing to be somewhere around here, seven or an eight in value. That's the lightness and the darkness of a color. We call it its value. And so I like it right around in there. And all I do is mix the color. I don't gesso. I don't add a whole bunch of funny things to it or anything. I just mix the color out of paint, put it on with a brush, or I use a big sponge, and then uh, I let it dry, and then sand it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. This is my the one that I like. It's a 3M Pro Grade. 100, this sandpaper lasts forever. It sands beautifully onto the surface here and gives you just an am amazing surface to practice on. Um, but I don't use gessos. I don't. I only seal for very specific techniques, and I talk about those in the other videos. But the 90% of the time when I'm painting here at the studio, I just use the paint. I just mix up the paint, squirt it out, and put it onto the surface, sand it, and go. That's all I do. Okay. All right. The colors that I use out here are, this is my standard palette that I like to practice them with. This is the Hansa Yellow, Daryolite Yellow, Yellow Oxide. This is Naphthol Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, Thetal Blue, Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, and Titanium White. My daughter, Jessica, who manages the business for us now, she calls that my YouTube palette because a good 80, 85% of the videos that I do here on YouTube that's the palette that I use. That's the palette I use for everything that I paint. It's a good basic palette, 10 colors. You can do a lot of things with it, okay? And I do in a lot of different videos. So I put that out and I put this out on to just, uh, a, you can find it on Dick Blick. It's called a multimedia palette. I just put it out straight out here like this, squirt it right out. I only put out, you know, like a, a nickel size of the paint here. And uh, you're not, you don't waste paint. I don't put it out on wet paper towels. Or some people put it out on wet paper towels. That's the old way of doing things. We did that in the 80s and 90s. And today, some people that still use those old generation acrylics will, will still do that. And, and that's fine. That, that, that's fine. With the, the, these types of acrylics like Harris, you don't need to do it because this type of paint is different. Not all acrylics are the same. They have the one thing is they're, they're based around their solvent, water, but that's where they end. There's all kinds of different things in new generation acrylics that make them very different, okay? And so we can go directly out onto a palette like this and paint all day. You see me do that, okay? So that's how I put them out there. I do not like to use a paper towel with water in it because it adds water to the system, and I like to control how much water is in my paint. All right, let's go in here and let's talk about, you know, painting a rose. So I like my backgrounds here to be a about uh, somewhere around an eight or a nine, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is paint one with acrylic, which means we have a medium here, the slow dry medium, and this is propylene glycol, okay? It's a chemical called propylene glycol. And it is a very, very safe chemical. It's used in, matter of fact, this is kosher <laughs> propylene glycol. Uh, it's used in the food industry a lot. Uh, it's used in makeups and eye drops, nose sprays, everything. It's used everywhere. Um, and it's environmentally safe. It's non-toxic. It's a very, very safe product. But it is very, very slow drying, very, very slow drying. And uh, so if I put this out here like this, or if I put this on my hand, this will still be here in several hours. This will just be here. Um, and it is inside these paints. And not a lot of acrylics have it already inside these paints. Our acrylics have it inside the paint. We're, glycol, we're called glycol-based acrylics because not all acrylics are the same, right? And so... We use this product, we have this product, it's in here, so we can put it all out here very, very safely and stuff. But this is what I use to slow dry the paint, for to slow them down. But other than that, I can use just water, and I have a big cup of water out here. And so I use just water, and so I'm going to show you that with water, okay? And let's just take a look at some of the techniques that, that are acrylic artists. So we'll look at acrylics. And then at the end of the video here, we'll look at 
Alaprema type techniques, what I call wet and wet techniques. Those are the ones that you, those of you that are oils, you can paint those techniques that, that, that uh, with no problem, okay? All right. So let's say that I'm going to uh, blend two colors together. Let's just do something a little bit crazy here, okay? Let's just take white, which is our value 10 here, okay? And then let's put out some burnt sienna right here. Burnt sienna is right down here at a three or two or three. And that's a lot of difference between those two colors, light and dark difference. And see, this is a thing. A lot of people will put out their colors like this and then think they have to blend and blend and blend and their paints have to stay wet so they can blend and blend and blend and blend here until they make these absolutely smooth transitions of color. Well, if it's a very hot day out or there's, you know, a lot of hot air, which there isn't right here right now, but if there's a lot of hot air or something that's around, your acrylics, depending on the type of your acrylics, is going to dry very fast. So blending is something that I don't do with acrylics, the, the old traditional wet and wet blending when I paint. I tone paint. And what do you might be, now you can, see I can do it if I do very fast. But if I try to if I try to paint a rose with the acrylics, it's just going to dry real fast, and it's hard to get this blend. Um, and this you can already see is starting to dry up pretty quickly here. But the heritage does dry a little bit slower than most acrylics because we're a glycol based acrylic. Okay, so it's this glycol, this stuff, is in the tube already, so we already dry slower. So you can do it, but it's not easy. But how do I paint with acrylics? I tone paint. So let's just go back to this. This is what I do, is I pre-mix the color. So let's say take the white, okay? And then over here, we're gonna take some of our burnt sienna, and I put that down, burnt sienna here. And then what I do is I make an intermediate tone. So my white's up here to 10. My sienna's down in here. I need somewhere right around a six. And this is how I, I, I do acrylics, is I'm a tone painter with acrylics. And so I need somewhere right around a six, and I drop that tone in right there like that. And I already start some of the blend. Do you see that? And see, I like streaks and stuff like that because that adds all kinds of interest. And then, so that's just one stroke. So I made, Instead of blending here to make the intermediate, I made it here. Now, if I want to go lighter to soften that, I step off to the side, I lighten my color a little bit more closer to where I want to go, and I can just drop that down that side right there and start a lighter tone. Now you can see that tone that's right there. You can see it here, see? And so with one stroke and two strokes, I'm starting my blend. Now, this can be completely, totally dry because I took one stroke. Does that make sense? So a tone painter, it doesn't hurt a tone painter to work on something that's dry because you're mixing the tone rather than blending the tone. Does that make sense? So this is called a tone. This is a tone of white and burnt sienna mixed together. And it's up here around a value eight or so. You can see that, it's right up here. So now I go from white, which is 10, to my eight, down here to my six, down here to my three. So you can actually see the four tones here, the one, two, three, and four tones that are making that, okay? And, and very simple. I just, I go basically from here, from burnt sienna to here, to here, to there. And that's how I paint. So when I go paint a rose, which I'll show you here in just a second, when I go paint this rose, I go through the tones, through the scale like this with acrylics, letting the rose dry, okay? And that's how I do it. Now I have different rules for different types of roses and all that kind of stuff. but. I'm a tone painter. I look for the tone and not for the blend when I work with acrylics. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we can slow it down. I'm going to show you and do it. And you can slow it down and do a blend and a tone at the same time. I'll show you all that. There's a lot of possibilities. 
But let's paint a beginning rose here now and let's run through some rules and let's paint it tone. Let's paint it a tone, acrylic tone technique, beginning rose, okay? All right. So the first thing I always say to everyone when you're gonna paint a rose, don't paint a rose any larger than your hand. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna work with an eight brush so it's a lot smaller here. And one of the reasons why, when you're practicing, is so that when you're working, you're not reaching too far like this. And the farther you have to reach, that's gonna make your rose stiff. So keep your roses small, okay? Start out keeping your roses small. About the size or so of your hand. And I always say, Make a rose about a circle, and uh, it can be a circle or an oval. I show you all different kinds of ways to do it, a circle and an oval. Now, the rose is three parts. Basically, it has three parts when you look at a rose, okay? It has what we call the center of the rose, which is this area, the bowl of the rose, which is this area, and the outside reaching petals which is here. So if you look at this rose here, here's the bowl of the rose right here. And you see that nice kind of a shadowy color there. Here's the center of the rose, and then here's the total size of the rose. So the first thing I have to do is I draw out kind of a circle for the size of my rose, and then I take a stroke here, like a, almost like a crescent shape that's gonna be right around in here, and it's just basically a smaller circle. That's gonna be where the bowl of the rose is, okay? That's the bowl of the bottom shadow of the bowl of the rose, right here. Boom, that's it right there. So we have this outside line, which is the outside petals. We have the bowl of the rose. Now we need the inside darker line of the center, okay? All right. Now, so the center is gonna be here and smaller, and it shouldn't be tiny. It should be a pretty good size center. You'll know, you'll see, you'll get the feeling of it here as you start to put that on. So now that means this rose looks this way. So I have three components of the rose. I have the center, the bowl, and the outside petals here, okay? Now, as I'm gonna, when I'm going to uh, add the center, this is usually where I start with the rose. If I'm looking up here, my board is about an eight or a seven. I usually mix up a tone that is about at least two values darker. So if I'm at an eight or let's say a seven, a six or a five here would be a good color. And I usually like it cool, which means I go over here to one of my cool colors, like a quinacridone. Now, quinacridone's down here is a three or so, so I might have to add just a little bit of light to lighten it up. And you can make all kinds of mistakes uh, with your roses. You can be, uh, you know, value or so off or so. But if I put this on, you can see here, it's quite a bit lighter than a four. It's not, and it's probably right around a six. And acrylic's dry, and we always remember this during your entire painting career, acrylic's dry, one value darker. So if I see it as a six, it's gonna draw to a five or so. But let's just take this six, okay? So I put this six out here. When I'm gonna put the center on a rose, I come right down here, right where the front of the, the top of this part of the front of the bowl is gonna be hitting the inside throat of the rose. That's where I start, where I'm gonna start my strokes. And I could have this, just so you, you know, I can have this color all the way across my brush here. Let's just put it all, load up my brush, and you can have quite a bit of paint. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push, now what I like to do is I like to push up and over a little bit. I make small, little strokes up like this, filling into the center. Now what this does, and sometimes I lift the pressure, what this does is this puts on what we call movement to the flower. So I'm putting on some just some light movement to the flower. So when I do that center, what I do is I just come in here and I go up and around, I go up and around, and I go up and around, and I start getting a few little streaks and movement to that center. That's the subtle little tiny streaks that you can see as you start to add those those little centers there, okay? All different kinds of ways, but we have that. So load paint into your brush and then go up and around. Then I'm also gonna push this color. 
And now I don't go, I don't like to go all the way up there like I did. I like to start right about in here and I'll push it heavier down here to this lower side down here. And I like when I do acrylics to use my finger to push off the color like this before it dries. We call that shear. That's called shear. I like to shear off the color. So in this lower bowl shadow, that's where that goes, right in there, just like that. Now what this is gonna do, now this isn't the darkest shadow. This is just a good, uh, a nice shadow color for me to start to see this rose, okay? Now, the other thing that I do is I always paint with a paper towel and I'll pinch off extra paint as I need here if I get too much or if I change colors. So here I'm gonna go now with a little bit more quinacridone, maybe a touch of the um, red violet. Sometimes I will add water, and rather than dipping my entire brush in water, what I usually do is put out a few little water drops that I can touch the brush to, to grab a little bit of water, just a little bit here, and that just helps the paint flow some better. Now, I do not want to cover up everything I just did. I want to come right down in here and I want to put a nice darker stroke. Sometimes I'll leave it very small like that because that's a nice little center on the rose. And sometimes I will take one or two more little strokes, but I won't go all the way to the top. Now that puts a darker colored, slightly darker color down inside the throat of the rose. And I still have some of that nice movement there. We want to also put a bit of that dark right down in here. So I come right down where that bowl is gonna be, and I won't go all the way up and around, and I'll push it right in here. Now, this is acrylic, and it's got water, and it's gonna dry really fast. So, you know, usually what I'll do is I'll put on the stroke, and I'll push it off. I'll shear it off here like this. And let's just add just a touch more, a little water, a little more paint. Push that off into there like that again. And sometimes I'll let that dry. Sometimes, you know, in some in some of you very hot areas and stuff, it'll dry pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, but before it dries, I try to shear it off, okay? But let's say that that you put this on here like this, and we'll, we'll kind of let that dry here for a minute, okay? And because some of you that are working with all, there's all different kinds of acrylics. Again, all acrylics are different, okay? This technique that I'm going to show you now, a lot of acrylics won't be able to do it, it because a lot of companies put in a, chemo, a thing, we component we call vinyl, which makes their acrylics very flexible. And it's a great thing to have, but it hurts a lot of what, I'm going to do now. So some acrylics are going to be able to do it. Some acrylics are not going to be able to do it. And it's what I call a solvent. Take a solvent. So as this starts to dry and, and stuff here, you won't be able to shear that off anymore because it gets it dries pretty quickly and it's still a little wet right there and there. But right up along that edge, it's dry. But with the Heritage, for about two hours or so, you can, let me just rinse the brush here for a second. You can take you this and use just water, just a little bit of water, and you can go right over that edge there and blend it back out here. So see, I can touch that and blend those together like that without a problem. And I can use my finger to push it, to soften it, to, you know, to do whatever I want to do with that. That works for about two hours or so with the Heritage. Some acrylics are going to be able to do it, some won't be able to do it. It all depends on their formula that they have. Some are not made, some acrylic companies are made to dry, like I could say, very fast, very hard, so you can't do that with. But with the Heritage, you can do that. So if I wanted to just take some water right up here and push it right into this flower up here and then just soften that out, you see, I can still blend that all out there and soften it all out. Okay, so I have lots of time to do that. That's the big thing. So I have lots of time I can do that. So that's basically the shadowing of the three parts of the rose that I do with the sh with the shadowing. And really, this starts to look like a rose. See, if I just took some soft color. Now, see how this is this is dry because I mixed it a little bit ago. But let me show you. I mean, this is dry. 
This is dry on the palate, right? So in extender, if I put extender, like I just drip my tip, my brush here in extender. See how extender won't do anything to it. Extenders only work when the paint is wet. When the paint is dry, extenders don't work. Glycol does not work. You have to use water. So you have to use the solvent. Let me make sure my finger is kind of clean here. Let me just take out a little bit of water. Now watch what happens, because water is the solvent, right? So I come over here, I put my finger in some water, and I touch this over here, and up will come the paint. And the paint will move again, and the paint will reconstitute and do its thing, okay? So as this dries over here, if I come over here and touch my finger into extender, and I put extender over here, it will do nothing to the rose. Does nothing. Extenders don't work when the paint is dry. But water does, because water is its solvent. So I'll put a little water on my finger, and water will move it. See? Water moves the whole thing here. Boom, I can take that whole thing off, soften it off, and work with it. Depending on your acrylics, you can do that and soften it all off and do whatever. So the main thing I want to see as you are working with glycols or water, water's the solvent. Water can cut through the paint even when it's the heritage, when it's dry, but it does not always work um, with all, that technique does not work with all acrylics. It all depends, okay? It all depends. So if I have an area that's dry and I want to go back and blend this some more, like right into here, right now, adding extender, taking some extender in my finger here and putting it on here and working it, well, we've got a wet bead of paint there, but it will not blend it, see? But if I t clean my finger here again, grab some water, and I push, let's see if we can blend off these things, even after they're dry. Here, we'll blend those two colors together there. Just push a little bit. See how the edge is disappearing, how they're blending together? Right there like that. And it just feels so nice as it's rubbing through and blending that together. Here, it'll do it over here as well. So sometimes this, this is what I call, a technique I call, and you'll see it in some of their called solvent blending, where we come back with that paint as it starts to dry and you can come through it even after the acrylics are dry and blend them like this and I can smooth it all out just like that till that one starts to look a little bit more like this and of course I can add some more you know darker color here and now blend that in even more solvent blending here together using the water like that this is the main difference between new generation and old generation and different types of acrylics. Do they reconstitute with their solvent and when do they reconstitute? And so it makes it, it makes quite a bit of difference. Okay, so this is how I, this is the main parts of the rose. And as you see, it can start to look like a rose. And then all I do here, and see this is dry, so I'll just add some water here to this, reconstitute it up here. You, so I can use this. And then all I do from this point on is I make the reaching petals, the petals that go in and out of the bowl here like this, and this starts to form this rose here like this, see? And I can put up some softer, warmer colors and stuff, and, and you can start to see what the shape of the rose is. It's three parts. It has its inside, it has its bowl, and it has its outside, okay? All right, so let's paint a rose. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's say we're going to do a white rose. The last thing I want to do when I paint a white rose is start my rose white. I want to start it at around, I don't want to use a 10 up onto here. I want to come down a little closer to my 8 or my 9 right in here. Let's make a little yellow with it. It could be all kinds of colors. Sometimes I'll add a little green, a little blue, a little reds. And I just make a gray, fun gray colors, all kinds of ways here, okay? And I make it kind of light, and it'll be, and it's basically right here, like this background. And I'll make it a little lighter, if it's going to be a white rose, I'll make it a little lighter than the background. 
And what I do is I just come in here and casually put in some color about the size of the rows that I want to paint. Now I'm painting all acrylic here, okay? So I, about the size, no bigger than your fist, about the size of the rows. Sometimes I take my finger while that's wet real quick and I just blur off the edges. I like to blur off the edges like that, okay? So I don't want to come in here and make a perfectly round, 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 round circle because that perfect round circle is stiff looking. You want to break it off a little bit, break it off. Break off the edges a little bit so it's not perfect, okay? So it has the feeling of a circle, but it's not a perfect circle. Now, the next step is we say we come right around a five or a six or something in here. And let's use our, let's put that nice uh, propylene glycol, that extender away for a second. We'll come in here with some quinacridone, maybe a little bit of our light color, so it's just a softer color here, but it's cool. I like to use these to start my centers because they're cool in color. Sometimes I'll add the warmth, a little bit of warmth of the burnt sienna, but I make sure I have some of my cool in there so it stays cool. Now the first thing I do is the center and I start in very small right up here and you can draw little circles if you want and then I come up and around, reaching up and around, up and around, up and around, lift the pressure, leave the streaks, lift the pressure until you're making that circle. Does that make sense? Okay. Then you're going to pick up some more of that. Don't go all the way up here. Just start right around in here and make the crescent, kind of a crescent shape that's going to be the bowl right down here. I widen it out on these sides here. And then I shear it off, push it off here. I push it off so it's not perfect like that. That's how I like to start the, the rows, just like that. So you see that nice soft color there, right like that, right? This is important. Now why we use small movements here is these are the youngest, smallest petals on the rows. As the rows starts to open up, the bowl petals here would be the next size, and the reaching petals are the oldest, largest petals in the rows. Now, Let's come back with a second one. Let's pick up a little more quinacridone, a little bit of red violet, make it slightly darker, darker, smaller. So now we'll just put in a small little push up and around, maybe one or two, maybe a little bit more right over here on this side and just leave it. You can push it around with your finger a little bit to add some movements or little touches, but don't go all the way to the top. Don't do that. Now let's put some, not all the way up here, down in here. Push some of that nice dark down in here, maybe push it off a little bit to soften it. You can just push it a little bit to soften it. If you're painting with the acrylic, you can touch, let's put out a little more water right there. You can touch a bit of water right here into your brush and just run it right through like that just to soften it out. And sometimes I'll pinch wipe my brush pick up just a little more water like this and run it right through like that to soften it. And, but this is also where I like to use my clean finger and just push like this because I like, and I push, I always push in that rounding shape of the rose, always in that bowl shape. That's what I like to have right there. Okay. So that's not too bad. It could be a little bit more right in there. So I'll just leave that. And I don't always like to blend. I like sometimes to have the rose gets pretty when it has some stops. So there's our shape. Here's going to be a white rose. If this was a yellow rose, I'd start out with a yellow first and then put this shape in. That's it right there. Okay. Now, I like warmth to it. So I'm going to rinse my brush here real quick and I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow oxide. So here's my cool side, my bottom side here. My yellow oxide is my warm, and I like to put a little bit of warm to the light side. And then I'll just push that around a bit here like this. So I put in a real gentle, thin, with some water color of the yellow, and that puts a nice warm. So now I have a warm side and a cool side to the rose. Now all I have to do is, so I got the basic shape of my rose in, and it's starting to look a little bit like a rose. Now what I'm going to do is come in and 
start to add petals. So here's the color of my rose, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Not the pure white, but almost. And I'm going to leave that yellow in my brush. And the first thing I do is I come up here and see if this is the curvature of the smaller petals. My first petal, I come right up against the edge and it has to be a little bit larger because it's a little bit older petal. Okay, so I just go like this. I set the brush down like this. Okay, sometimes I'll put a second one right up here, a little more color right there. But that builds the front part of my rose right here. Now, as I come around, I gotta make it a little darker and a little softer because I'm heading to the shadow side of my rose, okay? Heading to the shaft side. You can see this is dry already. See how this is dry right here already? Okay, so I'm going to head to the shadow side. So usually what I do is I go right up towards my shadow here, pick up this color with a little bit of the shadow in it, and put some of that on. And sometimes I'll just push it like this. This is called sheer. You'll see me do this in all of my online classes called shear. I, after I make the stroke, I do it real quick. I just go like that and I shear it off. I can take some of this, push it on here like this and shear off and soften the back of the rose up here if I wanted to make it look a little softer or a little more interest like that. I just put it on and then just pull it like this and it's dry. It dries immediately. Everything here is dry, right? So... You heard me say immediately in this, when I paint with acrylics, I am a tone painter. I am not a blender, okay? Because I realize my paints will dry really fast, and so I have no time to blend. So I don't. I tone paint, okay? So what does that mean? Let's come out here, okay? And let's just come out here to the front. We'll pick up some of our white. We'll just grab a big thing of white. Let's go right up here to white. And I'll come right out through here. I'll come right out by the edge, sometimes a little bit longer, but right out by the edge. And what I do is, what I imagine is right here, is this is the stem coming in to the rose. There's a calyx right down here. And you'll see there's some great videos that I put up there in the uh, How to Correct Roses playlist. I want you to go there. And I want you to watch those roses in there. I break apart a, a rose and I show you where the calyx is, how the petals go in. But everything on this rose joins in to this calyx, which is really right about in there. So sometimes I even put a little dot. That's my target. So whatever I start out here, it'll come out about this far here, I pull it right towards that target right in there. Okay? And then I'll come out, I usually do three strokes onto my petals here, just like that, three. And that makes a beautiful little petal right there. Now, what I like to do is shear off the end of that, okay? And I'll, I'll show you a couple different ways. Let's put, let's put in another one. So now here with my next one, here's my dot. My angle has to change a little bit. So instead of coming in, don't come in like this because that's not heading to the dot you got to head to the dot. So the next petal I start out here like this has got a head to that dot. This one's got a head to that dot. That one's got a head to that dot. Does that make sense? Okay. So normally what I do is I turn and I immediately shear it off in and out like this and that softens that edge just like that little petal is blended and pushed into the rose like that but I'm gonna let this one dry for just a few minutes and you can see it's just about dry here now. It's a nice warm day here today, so it's just about dry. So what I do is I'm a tone painter, right? So what I do is I know I'm here, I know my rose is here, maybe a little yellow. And so what I do is I'll come right in, I'll take some of my white, some of this, maybe a touch of yellow right here, and I make a tone that's right in between them, and I touch that right into that area there. Now you can already see that color is right there where I sheared it off. And then all I have to do is just lightly push it a little bit, and it softens out, and it goes right in. So it looks just like you've blended it. By putting a tone that is right between the white and this color that you see here. Now, if I come over here, let's add some white and a little bit of water, a little bit of the, let's put a little bit of the pink into this. And I come over here and I start to build, and I want to build stroke to that point, stroke to that point right here. 
and I want to soften this out, this time I should probably have a little bit more pink into it as I pull the stroke right across there and maybe a little bit more of that quinacridone pink right here as I put it right into there and then I'll shear it off and it looks just like it's part of it, like you've blended it out there without a problem. And I can put another tone in there. I could say, okay, that needs to go a little darker. So I look at that tone and I'll come up here and I'll make it just so I can look at it till it's a little darker and push that on and it's just a little darker and it gets smoother and more and a look like it's been blended, but it hasn't. I haven't gone back and forth like that at all. I've taken one stroke. I've made the tone here on my palette. I see my whole rose right here. See, that's the difference, okay? All right, so, so we have that nice cool uh, color over there. Let me rinse that cooler color off of my uh, palette. Now, sometimes I go through and I'll, I don't do this always, but I'll restate a little bit more yellow maybe into the rows here if I want to see some more warms and cools. I'll come back out here, maybe a little bit more white. I always will mix it down. I never use pure white until the very end. But now, so my bowl is coming up along here. My bowl is right up along in there. There's my bowl. So now I'm going to put another set of petals right here pull down towards that bowl, pull down, almost down towards that, pulling down towards where that point, where that dot has got to be, right? Just pulling that down because that's got to round in. And I just round it right into the bowl there, just like that. Okay, and let's pick up just a little bit more. It's not pure white. You can see pure white over here. I'm not pure white. I'm down just a little bit. And this is where I put in other petals. So I'll put maybe another petal right here, head to that. So I don't line them up. I'll, I'll cross over each other a little bit. Let's pull here and let's pull here. And that's where I like, this is what I like to do is soften it by pushing it, which immediately softens it. Boom, just like that, softens it. Or you can make the tone right there very easily, make the tone. Let's put one right in here. Maybe a bit more white here. Pull that one in right there. Now that's a lot of that's a lot to have to push together. So let's put in a tone right in there. We'll take a little bit of water here and a little bit of our quinacridone. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in it, a little quinacridone, burnt sienna, and just drop that tone right there, then push. And you can see just once or twice. Push. I like to leave this. I like to leave little streaks because to me that just adds all kinds of interest to the uh, to the flower here. Now, as I come into here, I have a little bit of space here. I can put in. Uh, I can leave the rose like this because this is starting to be a nice, pretty basic rose. Let me take just a bit of water here, here, and so I can leave it like that, or I can come back. I can pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of white on the edge. This is what I like to do. And I can bring out some of it just by stroking the edge of those petals, bring it out a little bit more. But right into here, I can, I have a space that's right into here. Now I can fill it up with a petal this way or fill it up with a petal this way. I, if it's anything, I tend to go to the bowl. So I tend to fill up a bowl petal down again, which is what I like to do. But now in doing that, you see I lost some of my bowl right here. You don't worry about it. You just go back to any of your soft. And if you have to mix it again because it dried, that's okay. Take a little water, a little bit of this, and just add a bit of that stroke right back on there. And it'll bring it back because the bowl is still underneath there. The bowl is still underneath there. Now you see you've got this really soft, soft rose here that uh, you can do anything with. And if I want to continue filling up with it, let me rinse that pink out of my brush here. If I want to continue some of the petals, maybe I put some lighter little pink ones over onto this side here, pulling towards that line a little bit there. Maybe a softer little pink one right up here. So you can see I always pull down towards that line there 
and but I never lose the bowl. Let me show you. Let me restate this real quick. A little quinacridone, a little water here. Quinacridone and burnt sienna here. I never lose this part of the rose. And this is where I start to come back. Maybe I'll add a little bit more back into here. I always always say restate or find the bowl again it is the bowl that makes the pretty rose here okay so I, I sometimes I like that if I don't if I don't want to have that I just make a slightly lighter color and just pull down a bit to soften it here and just soften the movement sometimes I'll make a petal sometimes I'll take a little bit of my light that's here and just pull a little light petal here down this side and make a petal. That's your choice. How many are you going to put in there? See? And this is usually what I like to do. And I always do what I call a, um, a with my beginning students, I do what I call a 2 2 1 uh, type of rose. What that means is two layers of two layers of bold petals, two layers of light petals, and then what I usually do, what I like to do, is I'll take just a little bit of a light color here. So maybe even put your bowl color in your brush pick up a little bit of the light on the edge and you can just use the chisel of the brush just a chisel and you can pull a little chiseled line down like that and that gives it the look of another little petal right there just like that without losing the petal or feeling of the bowl so it kind of fills it up a little bit there but see the the main thing that makes it a rose is not all the petals it's this it's your shadowing here that is going to make it a rose, okay? So don't ever lose your shadowing. The shadowing is the most important part, okay? Now, I can come back and I can add a little bit more color here, stroke them again, add a little bit more. Um, let's put a, a bit more of a white here, okay, right up into the very front up here. So I'll, sometimes I'll come back and stroke again building more opacity, more opaqueness to my colors, you know, adding the, the look of another little petal or something like that. Sometimes I take just the tiniest, I'll put some darker color here, just the edge of a little bit of white, and I'll pull down and, and put little petals inside the rows, little soft ones, all different kinds of ways. If I want the rows, let's put a soft soft little color right here which will help the rows round up if you want to make your rows look a little bit more round there and if you get it too light let's say that you make a mistake here and you put on too much white and now that front pedal that pedal is trying to come up here to the front it's no biggie just take some of your base color of your rose a little bit of your cool color just put that tone in there and just push lightly and it'll soften out and it'll just become part of the rose again. Just like that, see? There's a lot of really fun, fun techniques. Now that's a nice soft, very, very soft rose, kind of like one of the ones that I do there. Um, sometimes I'll edge, I'll come back and pick up an edge of light color that is usually a value or so lighter. So I'm pretty light up here, eight and nine but I'll use that little corner of white like this and roll over onto the edge and draw the edge of a petal and that just pops it off a little bit clearer, easier to see. It's called a petal edging technique, you'll see that. So I can draw certain petals in and bring them up a little bit closer, a little heavier here. Um, and uh, you know, they can um, do that into the inside up into here a little bit more, maybe right up in here like this. So you can see, and so you can uh, lighten it up and edge up, but you want your outside petals here to, see I don't make perfect little petals, it'll just disappear. So when I go to petal something here, I start out here like this, I will pull right across, that's your first one, and it should be a couple values lighter than what you have here onto your background. So look at your background go no more than two values or so lighter do not use pure white you don't need that and that goes on 
Then I come out here and pedal this. Then I drop in another one. Then I drop in a smaller one. Slowly working down to what would be the point of where that calyx of where that flower is going to be. That's how you stroke those things together. And that's how you... Uh, start to really build it up and you can make it more if you use more of your chisel like this just that little edging the pedal edging technique like this and use the chisel more like that what you actually start to do is make the rows you know not only have a little more detail but a little bit more fluffy so here I'll make a just a little bit better of a an edge right there like that just by pulling that across and that's all up to, to you. Now, when I finally evaluate the rows, now see, I like the center here just a tiny bit darker than I like my bowl shadow. I find that that works very well for me. Sometimes I'll even them out, but sometimes I like that center just a little bit darker because what that does is that pulls your eye into here. And if it, yours is too dark, just take some of your color and just go over it a little bit and soften it out. Okay, or if you need some more shadow over here, just take some of your darks here, okay, and just pull some more darks right into here, shear it off, add some additional darks, make sure those darks carry up here a bit, you know, but uh, with good, with good, you know, new generation acrylics, you can take just water into your brush and run it right on that edge there like that. See how it blends it? See how it immediately blended it? And that's uh, that's what I call solvent blending. It's there, and it, it solvent blends right away here. And so, you know, you can add more right in there like that, okay? And how would you soften that? How I choose to soften it first is a half tone. I'll come up here. Now, this is all a little dry, so I'll add some water and reconstitute this up. This is right about a good tone to sit right in there like that, see? And that half tone, that's where I am as I'm a tone painter. Rather than blending it, blending it, I like to tone paint it. Now, see, that looks very soft and very blended. And I can drop some of that tone in here like this and make that whole side of that rose this whole side here look very very blended and it's not okay and it's not so this is all painted pure acrylic this is all painted as it's drying you know so let's take it here's where I did this one where it was completely dry here if I'm doing a rose really fast the first thing I do is if I'm going to do a little rose here I push up and around up and around that sets the center then I put on the bowl not all the way around but about three quarters maybe and I like to push slightly so it's not a perfect here I push off the edges and you see how you already start to see the rows right you start to see the rows then what I'll use is just a little corner of the brush here and let's just put in a little soft color and some white here let's just use a little corner of this and some soft and I'll push that front bowl of it on there. Now this is going to be a tiny little rose. So maybe that's enough. There's that one. Let's take just a tiny bit of the soft white. Mix it down just a bit so it's not pure white. And let's stroke in towards the little visual mark. Put in another petal, another petal. And you can start to see a rose start to come to shape there. See? Here comes your rose. And here, since it's a dinky little rose, we can just maybe put on another little petal right here. Here, push that around. And just leave that as a little rose, maybe a little light petal. There's a thousand different ways you can do it. But see, you can make a nice little rose. But what really makes the rose is these shadows, those shadow components, okay? All right. Let's try one wet, okay? Let's try one where it will stay wet the entire time, the entire painting process. Matter of fact, with a heritage like this, it'll stay wet for a couple hours. And you'll see me in other videos do that. So I'm gonna take out open medium. This is Derivan's open medium. This is what I put out if I really wanna keep a painting wet for a long time. That and the extender, the extender medium. Now, what's the difference? Extenders are thin. These are very thin, almost just a little thicker than the consistency of water. 
and this is very thick. So if I want to really, and you got to remember this, the thicker, the slower drying, okay? So the thicker you make something, the slower drying. So let's start out by, how do I go about painting an Olaprema, or for you, those of you that paint in oils and stuff doing that. I start out with a thin color this time. So I'll make my light color here a little bit lighter than my background. I'll add extender medium to it, or oil artists will thin it slightly. We'll take a little yellow, a little light, Okay, and I'll push on about the size that I want using the extender here so it's not perfect and then I blur it off. So when I use um, really wet techniques, you'll hear me say blur it off and not shear it off. There's a, there's a little bit of a difference. When I use pure acrylic, you'll hear me say shear. When, you, when I'm working wet and wet, you'll hear me say blur because this is not really sheared. This is just taken out very thin. And when I work colors together, I call it blurring. I'll show you that in just a second. Now, so this is going to stay wet. You can see that's wet. That's going to stay wet, okay? And then I'll come up here. Now I'm wet into wet. I'll come in here and I'll add a lighter pink here. So I want to maybe down around to six or so. Let's put a little burnt sienna into that. And I'll come down, I'll divide my rows up visually, divide my rows up to my three parts. Now, what I'm gonna do is just come right down in here to the center, push up and down just a little bit. So I don't go this way, don't go this way. That's a decorative painting thing I did for years. I push up and around a little bit, then up and around a little bit, then lift the pressure on your brush so you're not using very much paint. And this is where I'll also, you have to, if you're gonna push this time, you have to do it very softly, very lightly, because the paint will move really easy because it's wet, really wet. Then I take a little bit more, come right down to here, not all the way around, maybe about three quarters of the way, a little wider at the bottom, and I'll push. now. We can blur these, we can blend these together. Let me just show you. I can wipe my brush like this. I can pick up a color, a tone, that's right in between the two. And see, I can just blend those together now, really easy. Boom, boom, boom. Really blend those together nice and smooth. And, or I can push them together like this. Now, I prefer pushing. I prefer pushing because I get these streaks of movement. Blending kill to me, blending kills the movement of the rose because it takes off. You know how marble, marble, and it's like a, with the technique we call marbleizing. And in in all the premium, you hear me use a term called incorporate the colors together. What I mean about incorporate is like marbleizing like pushing them in or around each other, but not so much that they smooth out to make a smooth blended color. To me, that's very boring. It's very plastic looking. I like movement here. So I tend to take shadow colors like this and push like this so that I don't destroy all of the movement. I like the movement to it. I like that type of movement, and so sometimes I like that movement going in and out like that and around onto the bowl, but I like that movement rather than being smooth, okay? And there's all different kinds of ways. Some of you may like the smooths. I went through years of realistic painting and painting absolutely smooth, I don't like to do that anymore. So now let's add a little darker. So the next stage is a little darker color. So we'll go a little darker. We go darker, we go smaller. Let's come right into the inside here and add a little more contrast, a little darker. And how far out we go, that's up to you. Let's add a little more contrast dark right down into here. Now see, I like to push and get some movement. I don't like to blend, but you can blend. You can see how you can blend, okay? Now, you can see they're very close looking to each other here, you know, and matter of fact, is I, I left a little bit more movement there. I could add any of that, even though this is dry, I can come up here and add some of that darker little movement right in there, bring those closer together, okay? Now, what's the next step? So I'm gonna wipe my brush, I'm gonna take out, and I use extender, 
and I don't rinse it in water because when you rinse it in water, you add fast drying water right into your paint. You don't want to do that. So I use extenders. Now I'm going to pedal it. When I go to pedal it, I'm going to start using the heavier, thicker uh, medium here, the open medium, because this is going to slow the paint down even more and it's going to make it nice and thick. So I'm going to take some white, some open medium, a little bit of my yellow here, nice warm. Matter of fact, let's take, forgot that I'm going to do this, let's take a little extender and some yellow oxide and push a warm over onto that side first. Now I use extender so it's thin, but for the petals I use open medium because it's thicker. See, it's thicker in my brush, okay? That's going to give me thicker petals, more interest to my stroke, see? So I'll push on that that petal, boom, maybe a little one right up here. Maybe I want that a little lighter. So I'll pinch wipe my brush, pick up a little more white. Let's lighten that up just a bit more. Now down here, I can pinch wipe my brush and I can blend them, certainly. But to me, that's just not interesting enough for me. So I'll take a little yellow and a little white and I'll run them together here. And this is what I call casual painting of the rose. I like to push them around so I still maintain some movement and it's not smooth blended like that. I don't care for that. That's me, but you can smooth blend it if you want. Okay, so I'll pull that in. Let's take out a little more white right into some of this, add some open medium. Here would be our dot, right? And But see, this is all wet out here still, so I can still move and, and soften and move that. So I'm going to come right out to here, pull in, and pull in, pull in, put that petal in, okay? Now, I can pinch wipe my brush, okay? And I can blend that because it's all wet. See, I can just go like that and just blend that if I wanted that smooth like that, or push it with the finger there because everything's staying wet here. Let's pick up just a bit more. We'll pull down towards that dot pull down towards that dot. Let's put this bigger petal on, maybe a smaller one out there. To soften that right in there, to soften those together. See, this is where I look at that tone. It's more yellow. So I pick up a little bit of yellow and I just run it right next to it, right like that. And not too many times because you lose it, but you can see how boom, blends right there, just like that. So oil painters can do that really easy. You just take that yellow back in there and just go boom, right like that, push that in. Or if to soften it, do that and work back and forth a little bit till you get some of the movement that you like to have in there. I like little tiny strokes of movement and stuff. So I'd like to have a little more yellow right there. And I'd put it in, maybe overstroke the light color one more little time there like that. There's a thousand ways to do it. But again, we're starting out with that same structure. Let's come out over here. Let's put in one, turn the brush slightly, as it's always got a head towards that center. And if I wanted to put any over here, maybe a little more pink, as I pull in this side over here. Sometimes I put this side over there, sometimes not. I'll push a little pink right into that. See, I like that movement. That's, that's what my rose is, you know. And we have a, a lot over on our group our heritage artist uh, group, acrylic artist group and stuff, we always talk about finding your own style, making your own, you know, your own way. Especially if you start using your finger and using your way, you're going to add your own style to it. Does that make sense? You're going to make your own particular style to a rose, you know, so you have that. All right, so maybe a little more pink here and we'll put in a lighter pink side over here to the rose and I can push those all together see that's that is all that is you see you see you see that all that rose is wet that whole rose is staying wet here i can push some softer little pinks back up here if i want to put some back petals around i can touch no i like to use my finger a lot but if you don't then you just use it wet like this the all the prima type techniques 
using it wet. Now maybe I want to increase my bowl again. Many times in my books and videos and classes, I always say restate the bowl. Some at some point in time, restate that bowl. You always you want to keep that bowl. That bowl is the most important part of the rose. That's what keeps it round, going round. So you want to keep that bowl round and get some different colors in there. I love darulite yellow into that burnt sienna. That's such a pretty color in there. And that works so well, especially in a transition from the warm to the cool. And adding a tiny bit of quinacridone into that, right into there. See, look at those tones. Aren't, aren't those really pretty? Those just work so well in there. And see, that's what I like, to push them all together and everything. So now let's just take some of that tone here. Let's lighten this all up a little bit more. We'll add some medium to it. I'll come down here kind of to a clean spot with some of those tones in my brush with some white and some medium here. And we'll come in here and we'll make the next larger petal up here in the front. I could be a little bit lighter. So I'll put a little more white into it here. How do you soften that? Well, I can pinch wipe my brush off like this. And so since everything is there so wet, I can follow the curvature of the bowl. You could just follow the curvature a couple of times and blend those together. And you can do that. I like to push with my finger, again, because that just adds interest. But there's all different kinds of ways. Let's come out here and put a bit of that light right out here. Okay. And this is the thing, you see, like this rose here, it's all dry. This one here is all wet. You can see that just staying nice and wet here. And it'll be wet for several hours. So, and you can work it. So, but you can see, you can paint a pretty rose here. You know, just like it, give it the look of an oil and stuff and a wet in the wet, all a prima type of technique, but using the acrylic. And I like the acrylic because I like it to dry on me. Sometimes they get into here and you go, oh, and the paint starts getting so thick. How do you get rid of that? And it, it's hard. Now, how do you soften that in there? See, if I go in there and blend, I can, A, I can make it soft, but I'll start to lose all that tone in there. So usually what I do when I'm doing all the prima, and you'll see me in those lessons, is I'll put a little bit of that soft tone into here and just pull right through it lightly. Like, like that and then push just a bit and you can see I can incorporate it and not lose that tone and I'm very careful when I paint not to, sometimes not to lose my tones when I'm making all these different colors that's what makes your roses so pretty here is when you start to develop these colors now I'm going to go almost pure white just a nice stroke of it right up here and make this rose a little different than that one. You could do the same thing and chisel here. I'm gonna build up this front just a bit. Now, I start to lose, let me show you a nice, wonderful wet in the wet technique here. So I'll take some of this thick white and I'll push that right up there like that. But I've, I've killed the bowl, the bowl shadow, which is what I said was the most important. So I lift like this and so I, and now I'm gonna set my brush down and lift off the excess paint. Boom, see? So, and then I'll pull some of it down, lift some of it off, pull some of it down again until I start to soften the rose to get the look of that petal that I want. Maybe just a little bit down. So I preserve some of the front of that bowl here. A little bit of the light on the edge. Drawing that edge. Let's put, see, I put in just a little bit of that light Let's draw in just a bit of an edge right there. Let's draw in a bit of an edge right here. So I come back and start drawing in edges. Let's put a soft, a little bit more of a violet lift off some of that right there. I'll go back and forth. And, uh, but I don't, I, I like to leave the movement. Now let's, I love this color in here. Let's put just a little bit of that back up in here. See that nice little warmer tone with that cooler tone? I can take an edge. You know, we just edge. Let's just edge just a little bit here. Get rid of that on this side. 
edge just a little and use that to draw little petals right along soft on that side to give the idea of little petals. There's all kinds of little ways here and that'll become your way. You'll start to find after a while you'll start to find your favorite ways of stroking or working roses and stuff and and uh, that will become yours your favorite methods of doing things but I like the bowl I'm going to take a little whenever I add extender to it it weakens the color and because it thins it and so if I take a little thin extender here I won't have too much power but I can go right over like this and reset find that bowl again at any time you see that so I can find it I can always go back and find that bowl really easy there's a lot of fun little techniques to it but wet and wet gives you more play time the only thing is and I'm very serious about this uh, my whole feeling is wet and wet is more difficult I was an oil artist for many years and then uh, as a matter of fact, I brought propylene glycol into this painting industry in 1986 and using it in these types of techniques, trying to get acrylics to work more like oils. And then I started to realize tone painting is a lot easier than blending. Blending is one of the most difficult things to do, to learn when to stop, the pressure, and how much to do. It's actually easier visually to make tones than it is to blend. And so I became a tone painter more than anything else. That's what I like to do is paint tones. And so I'm going to find that bowl again there. That's a pretty little rose, just like that. You can see they have some of the same looks. I like the modeling, the warms and the cools. But So I visualize everything out of tones, okay, out of tones. Now, one of the last things... You know, you never judge a rose because there's other techniques that you will learn along the way. And we can come in here like this and push that stem in and, you know, push multiple stems. You know, this is what I always like to say. The rose starts really taking on its life when it gets its stem. And the leaf, we won't go into leaves too much here, but I like to do leaves with pine green, burnt sienna, some water, some of my background rose colors here. And sometimes I do, there's other techniques I do, what I call negative painting, where we paint right up against the edge of the rose. So we physically shape the rose here, like, so I don't have a shape of a petal there, but I could. I just use my background here, and I can shape or give the impression of the shape of a petal, of a rose, of the rose here, by using the background here. So there's all kinds of other ways here, and we can do that with all of them, you know, that we can shape up and do all kinds of fun little things here with the roses. So here's a wet on wet, a dry technique. The most important thing about the rose, and there's a lot of beginning videos that I have, and I show you all different kinds of ways, because guys, there's a thousand ways to do this. And, and there should be, because it's art and it's creative. And all of us are going to do it a little different. And none of it is super easy to do. All of it's going to take some practice. It, it does, okay? It takes practice. It takes time. But boards are very inexpensive. The paint itself is very inexpensive. It uses higher quality products that you can use all the time so that you, you're learning the feel of them. Don't cheapen down just to practice. Use this high quality, you'll learn and practice faster and with less frustration, okay, than if you use the products that you're gonna be a professional artist with, okay? That's, that's my one recommendation. And you can paint all different kinds of pretty flowers. Remember, there's three circles, okay? The color gets darker, the area it occupies gets smaller. You'll study color theory or learn those things. All the classes that you take and everything that you do, you'll learn a little bit more and a little bit more, taking a little bit more of a bite into making that rose. And along the way on the journey, your brush is going to start finding its own way. And you've got to let that happen. That's where you start to develop your own technique for doing things. For so many years I was I copied and that was fantastic. I always encourage my students to copy. You know, there's a lot of artists out there that 
uh, that say, don't copy, get out there and do your own thing. I, I don't believe that, okay? I don't believe that. I mean, you know, I'm a very logical, analytical, left side brained painter, right? You know, left side brained pilot. When the pilot, when my instructor said, do this, I did that. That plane goes this way. That's how you learn, okay? You stroke a pedal this way. This is what happens. This is the look that it gets. You learn that. You learn that through copying it until you fill up this nice library up here full of techniques and pedals and different ways. And then they slowly will start expressing themselves in any way that you want to do it. But you have to... I'm a firm believer in copying. Copy copy for as long and get the ideas and build your library that's how you do it okay but uh, so that just is the basics of it I have a lot of other beginning videos that I'll approach it from a little different way and that's going to be my plan and over on our paint it simply channel I'm going to put a lot of different types of beginning types of flowers different things Lots of different ways to approach the rows in different styles, beginning ways. They're all going to basically go with that three circles. That's going to be so important. Um, but I'll approach it a little different. So hopefully you hearing it this way and then hearing it this way and hearing it this way. It will all kind of gel together there. And um, you'll you'll find your your way of, uh, you know, of doing things. You know, in the last, in the last couple of... Uh, in the last year you think come up in the last couple of videos I think my dog here was the most uh you are a good girl. I I think she's more popular than I am. So she's she's made a couple of pair and she's waiting, she knows it's the end of the video. <laughs> You're a ham. <laughs> You're a ham. She uh knows it's the end of the of the end of the video here, so she likes to make her appearance yet. And so do you, Callie. You know, so do you, her sister, the two girls here. So Anyway, um, I will pray, I will try to approach it several different ways for you guys, and uh, explain it all different kinds of ways. And like I said, you know, make some, you know, write those comments, ask those questions. There is not a stupid question out there. I'm telling you, there's not. You know, um, I when I was learning, I was so afraid sometimes to ask a question because I didn't want to appear dumb or anything like that. I don't do that. There's, there's, if you have it, there's 200 other people out there that have that question. Ask the question so we can film it. We can get the answers out there so we can all get out there and start painting some really pretty roses with less frustration. There's going to be frustration, okay? But there doesn't have to be that much. We can help each other, okay? But we're going to do a lot on Paint It Simply channel, a lot of these other things. And help us out by liking and uh, sharing our channel and help us promote the channel. And we'll do a lot of uh, really, really, really great things out here. Right? Right, girls? Yep. Okay? Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, Landscape. Landscape's coming next. I'll see you guys on... Uh, the Landscape one. We'll try that. And yes, we go back and forth like this because... You know, learning to use that brush and learning to paint that rose, you you practice roses, but you got to paint all this other stuff because your brush is a tool. And you learn how to use your tool different ways and you get confidence with your tool, you can do anything. You don't learn how to paint absolutely beautiful roses by only ever painting roses. That's why I go back and forth between all kinds of other stuff. Plus, after painting 25 or 30 roses, it's nice to take a break and go paint a cloud. But painting of cloud is going to give you an idea for a rose. It will. Okay? All right, guys. Thanks so much for helping us and supporting us in your comments. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. And varnishing too, Kipper. we got to do varnishing. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Okay. I'll see you guys.